The Purpose of Wealth 1. Freedom We will discuss the topic of wealth in the depth that it requires, because there are great differences between the terms wealth, money, and your position in the social hierarchy. Out of all three of them, wealth is the one you should go after. The fundamental reason why most people want to build wealth in life is freedom, but even freedom takes multiple forms. Today we'll discuss the idea of wealth as a facilitator of different kinds of freedom. Money and wealth are very different. Money is what you earn in exchange for your time and work, while wealth is the fortune that grows outside of your direct input. Wealth is making money while you sleep. Wealth continues to grow even if you decide to take a sick day. The same cannot be said for money. Even if you earn a lot of money, one can still have money problems. The most direct type of freedom wealth solves is Welcome to Alux.com The place where future billionaires come to get inspired. If you're not subscribed yet, you're missing out. Freedom from money problems The debate on whether or not money can make you happy is still going, but one thing is for certain, a lack of money will make you unhappy. Much of our unhappiness comes from our inability to go through life comfortably and unstressed. Most people will never be financially free, they'll never escape money problems. Most people will work several jobs for 40 to 50 years and at the end hope that they've been able to acquire enough all these years to keep them going until the day they eventually die. Many people struggle financially until the very end, with the debt being passed on to their children. Wealth solves this problem as long as you don't screw around with it. The house in which you live is not wealthy because it requires you to go out into the marketplace and trade your time in order to pay for the mortgage or utilities. The moment you distance yourself from it and rent it out to someone else, that is when a house goes from a liability to an asset, and wealth is made out of value-generating assets. The notion of escaping money problems through money-generating assets is nothing new, but every generation has their own version of a wealth-building protocol. If back in the day a cow was the go-to asset, it's because it gave milk and milk could be sold if you chose to. The wealth of an individual was determined by how many cows, sheep, and chickens they had. The fundamental money problems are food and shelter. A person becomes free once their income from wealth crosses the threshold of food and shelter. Then you have to expand it so that the wealth can take care of the entire family and make tomorrow predictable from a money problems perspective. A person cannot afford the luxury to work on their mental state if their children have nothing to eat. The purpose of wealth is to free the individual from money problems. Food taken care of, bills taken care of, the future is predictable enough to feel safe going into tomorrow because you have enough wealth to give yourself a fighting chance. Which brings us to the next type of freedom that wealth facilitates. Freedom to try and fail. Wealth is determined by how many times you can afford to fail and still be fine. It's a luxury combined from timing, money, and mental fortitude. If you're 23 years old, no family and minimal overall expenses, you can start and fail multiple times. But what if you're 40 years old with a family of two children where a family needs your salary to survive? Can you afford to quit your job and work for the next five years on your startup without pay? Probably not. This is one of those incredible advantages people born into wealthy families have, and although everyone dislikes the kids of the rich because they didn't do anything to deserve the privileged situation they find themselves in, deep down we're all hypocrites because we wish our children had access to the best possible tools to maximize their potential. Wealth allows you the privilege of being able to fail no matter who you are. Maybe you spent the first decade of your life working hard to build a company and through it your wealth, but one of your passions has always been painting or movie making. Because you were able to build wealth first, you can afford to pursue painting or making movies for the next 10 years because even if it doesn't work out, you're still gonna be fine. This is the main reason why you have to solve the wealth problem first. There's a very smart saying from, we believe, Nassim Taleb, who says, If you want to be a philosopher king, first become a king and then be a philosopher, not the other way around. 
The purpose of wealth is for you to have that safety net that allows you to try the things that you find interesting, because we are very complex creatures that are forced by the environment into tiny boxes, all in the hopes of efficiency and increased productivity. Which once again brings us to the next type of freedom that wealth allows you to go after. The freedom to explore. We are multivariant individuals, yet society is forcing you to pick what you want to be in life from a very early age. How many of you remember being children and all the adults asking you, what do you want to be when you grow up? Many of them living lives they haven't selected for themselves. Most people don't know who they are because they can't afford the luxury of finding out. We don't know how to be happy because we never take the time to find out what makes us happy, or fulfilled for that matter. In order to find your thing, you have to be able to first try many things and select the one that interests you the most. And it doesn't stop there because what interests you in one period of your life might not maintain said interests later on. This should come naturally as you evolve and develop an appetite for growth. One of the most important purposes of wealth is allowing you the luxury to explore and better understand yourself and the world which you're shaping. The more you learn about it, the more you become a part of it. There are things out there that would fascinate you for the next decade that you don't even know about because you didn't get the opportunity to explore the unknown deep enough to find it. Yet most of us know that there is this thing out there because we can feel it. We're curious beings by nature and we're curious to learn what makes us feel things. Mix the freedom to explore with the idea that tomorrow is taken care of and you end up with a special type of freedom. The freedom to pursue passions. This type of freedom is an extremely interesting one because it's not done for monetary gain. You don't go fishing to make money, you don't play video games, build ships in a bottle, or spend time with your pet for profit. You do it because it makes you feel good inside. Passions require time, and we know time is valuable. Passions require money, and money requires time to make money. This is the true underlying purpose of wealth, creating time for things that you want to do and not have to do. True wealth is being able to choose where your time goes. Life should be lived passionately, yet so many people forego their passions because they don't fit with the demands of a busy society. But without passions, one can never be happy. Although passions are not a necessity for survival, they are a necessity for a well-lived life, which is why so many fall short. The purpose of wealth is to allow your passions to craft an enjoyable existence for you. Actually, it's beyond that. The purpose of wealth is to allow you the freedom to be who you want to be and not what they expect you to be. And now, the final freedom we'll discuss today is the freedom from self and society. So what do we mean when we say freedom from self? There's this little voice in your head that you probably know very well that keeps trying to push you in a direction. Although it's coming from within you, it's not your words the voice is speaking, but the words of everyone that you've met. It's the voice of society. The voice wants you to get a safe job, to settle down, to fit. It says so, even though you've yet to shape yourself properly. The way society makes people fit is by crushing them into the empty hole it finds in the immediate vicinity of the individual. This is why most people's entire lives are wrapped up in the immediate environment. You've met your partner in a 30-minute radius from where you live. You found your job in the same area and now you own a suboptimal apartment there. But it's all rather convenient for your current lifestyle. There are two selves within us. There is the true self, the one where if every door was open for us, we would eventually become them. And then there's another identity dictated by what we think society wants us to be. Wealth allows you to put distance between your reality and that pestering voice. True wealth is making peace with your mind, being free of that voice, of the worries it brings with everything else. It allows you to not feel the need to impress people, to not play pretend for status games. Wealth allows you to be happy with who you are and change if that's what one desires. 
Who and what we are should be in constant change. We're not puzzle pieces meant to be inserted in specific gaps to fill in someone else's picture. We're more like colors that can go on a canvas. The purpose of wealth is to allow you to become the painter with said colors, whatever you want, without feeling the need to get the approval of others just for the pleasure of painting. But you know, wealth has other purposes than just freedom. Freedom to do nothing productively. One of the biggest problems people have in their lives is they don't know how to be alone, silent, and enjoy the moment. It's almost an art form. We're growing in a society where people used to signal to others, look how busy I am, as a way of playing status games. I'm busier than you, so that must mean I'm better than you, which couldn't be further from the truth. There's an old story we'd like to share with you that goes like this. A young entrepreneur was walking on the bank of a river one day when he met an old fisherman under a tree. Some of you might already know this story, but we'll share it either way. The young hustler approached the fisherman and asked him how much fish does he catch in a day. The old man replied, he doesn't really care how much fish he catches. The young entrepreneur proceeded to optimize the fisherman's life. If you catch more fish a day, you can sell the excess at the market and use the money to buy another fishing line. And then what? The fisherman replied. Then with all the excess fish you're catching, you could keep on selling it until you buy a boat. And then what? The fisherman replied. Then, using the boat, you can catch even bigger fish that will sell for even more money. And then what? The fisherman replied once again. Then you use that money to buy multiple boats, hire a bunch of people, and now you have an amazing fishing business. And then what? The fisherman calmly replied. Then, one day when the business is big enough, you could sell it to someone else and make a lot of money. And then what? The fisherman replied with a smile on his aging face. Then you could spend your whole day fishing and never having to worry about. And that's when the young man goes quiet. It's one of our favorite stories because many times in life we feel that other people are missing the point. If you solve wealth early on, if you do it smart, everything else won't look like you're doing much to anyone watching because they are conditioned to think that way. We want you to solve wealth this decade, Aluxers. Make it your priority to do so. Make it your purpose. And then use it to be free. Purpose of Wealth 2. Security Since our earliest days, the ones that survived the storm carried their genes forward, and in time, we understood just how important shelter and survival are. Every living being out there wants survival for themselves and for their offspring, with most being willing to sacrifice themselves as a last layer of protection for the new generation. Today, we'll discuss the role of wealth in this process of survival and protection. The first one we'll cover is also the most obvious one, physical security, where through wealth, one can directly protect the health of those sitting under the wealth umbrella. This is why wealth gives the bearer a great unfair advantage. It gives you that slight edge that might allow you to escape death's grip where others wouldn't be able to. The most direct example here is medical costs, where you don't have to start up a GoFundMe page hoping to go viral in order to take care of your child's surgery. You just pay for the best medical treatment your wealth can buy. Money buys you a fighting chance. This is why rich people buy expensive SUVs. If you get into a car accident and you're in a Volvo or a Tesla, your chances of survival are slightly better than if you were driving a less secure car. Rich people understand this and leverage their fortunate position to protect themselves and those they love. In terms of physical security, you can even look beyond that, where wealthy individuals move their families out of less safe environments. While the average person is stuck in the environment they're born in, the rich, through the power of wealth, simply pick their families up and move everyone across the world to get their family out of harm's way. As an individual, you're responsible for your own physical security and that of your inner circle. No matter the dimension of your wealth, you should carefully consider how to deploy a good portion of it to provide this type of security. It's a long-term insurance policy you don't want to skip out on. Immediately after the one where you actually die is the next step of security that wealth can facilitate. Security from poverty and all that comes with it, all the pain and sometimes misery. 
We are hierarchical creatures, and although money doesn't buy you happiness, it can get rid of a lot of sources of unhappiness. Wealth is meant to solve this for you. It's there to make sure you and those you care about will never return to a deficient state where you have to worry about keeping the lights on, heating, or putting food on the table. This is the fundamental reason why you should focus on building wealth apart from building lifestyle. It's also why you see famous people go broke. They're so tied up in maintaining their lifestyle that the cost of opportunity results in them sacrificing wealth. The secret is, you can actually have both, but you need to build wealth first and allow wealth to pay for your lifestyle. What would happen if you became incapacitated and unable to work for the next 12 months? Would your family be okay? How much of your lifestyle would be impacted? Maybe poverty isn't an immediate worry for the majority of you, but what about debt? Today's society runs on debt. Almost everyone out there has this gloomy, dark cloud of debt following them everywhere they go. Can you imagine having this burden off of your shoulders to know that you're free? We know what it's like growing up not having much and the pain and harm that the lack of something so trivial as money has caused us. This is why we made it our mission to never go back to that space. Wealth protects you from ever feeling like this again. A common mistake people make is believing that well-paying jobs are the same as security from poverty, but they're mistaken. They lied to you, but they lied because they didn't know any better. They told you that in order to be rich and successful in life, you would need a well-paying job. But that's not true. Nobody gets rich working for someone else. In order to build wealth, you need to own things that appreciate in value rapidly. Which brings us to the next type of security. Security through diversification. If you want to be rich, you need to own a business. Parts of other businesses, real estate, in-demand commodities, or what is commonly referred to as stores of value, like Bitcoin, art, or gold. By the way, if you go to alux.com slash Bitcoin, you can learn how to get started with crypto and invest in Bitcoin while the price is still low at under $100,000. For as long as you can remember, wealthy individuals in history were pictured as having incredible amounts of gold. That's why treasure chests were filled with gold coins. The true purpose of wealth is to completely remove the financial burden from the individual. The only way to truly achieve this is by having multiple sources of income independent from you. If there's one thing you remember from this entire series on wealth we're doing, let it be this. As long as you live, if you manage to create multiple sources of income that do not rely on your input to generate income, you will be free, rich, and never have to worry about money. This type of diversification of income is the most advanced type of financial security, and it's super important because it protects you from the next type of event. Security from Black Swan Events for those of you who've never heard the term before, a black swan event refers to something that is statistically unlikely to happen, but does happen every once in a while. Leave a comment below if you didn't know black swans even existed. For example, the pandemic was a black swan event. The poor were the hardest hit. We've all heard Ellen complain about how terrible the quarantine is from her $27 million compound and access to high quality medication 24-7. Wealth gives you the power to combat that one in a million rare illness that costs a fortune to treat. Wealth gives you the unfair advantage to be okay when everybody else would be in complete panic mode. It's the ship you have in your backyard knowing damn well at some point the flood will come, especially since you've seen those clouds looking pretty different lately. And lastly, Social Security. And no, we're not talking about your Social Security number. By Social Security, we mean putting a distance between you and the harm society can cause you. Discrimination is playing an incredibly nefarious role in our society, and to some degree, wealth can shelter you from it. Success, fame, and wealth serve the same purpose, security through elevation. Wealth goes beyond your skin tone, your accent, or your birthplace. It levels the playing field among the participants, and it's hard to look down on someone who's wealthier than you. Unless you screw everything up on an incredible scale, through wealth, you'll be fine. The purpose of wealth is to protect you against any type of hard, mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual. If you want your kids to be safe, become wealthy. Security through new lives. What if you could flip a switch and starting tomorrow, you would be someone else in a new country with a new name, a new identity, and the world is your oyster? 
What if you wanted to escape it all and instead of calling it quits like most people do, you could choose to simply become someone else? Wealth allows you to do just that. It can open doors, get you citizenships, and make new homes for you if that's what you decide to deploy it toward. Wealth is welcomed everywhere it goes, and because you have it, so will you. Just make sure you take care of it. Be rich enough that you could be anyone in the world and still choose to be yourself. Purpose of Wealth 3. Comfort as much as people would like to brush it off as unimportant, comfort is actually the third reason why people crave wealth and one that is justifiable in its pursuit. What is comfort if not the minimization of pain and misery? Comfort is what allows the individual to go through life and focus on pleasure and well-being. We are sensorial creatures, so comfort comes in many shapes and forms, going beyond the nice couch and living room. The first part of comfort is not external, it has to do with what's inside the body. Comfort through food. Everything we put into our body and environment alters the way we experience life. One of the greatest benefits of wealth is it'll allow you to improve these based on your personal needs and long-term benefits. For the average person, healthy food has become a luxury and an inconvenience. It's easier to grab some takeaway than fix yourself a salad, and most of the time it's even cheaper. People eat unhealthy food because of convenience, and on a second layer, because of financial reasons. Wealth serves as a facilitator for quality intake of energy and resources. When you eat right, you feel great, and feeling great is a form of comfort. Your body doesn't hurt, your muscles are strong, and your brain functions at a higher capacity. You feel amazing. This allows you to take care of you, the number one person you should be taking care of. For our earliest ancestors, food was, quite literally, wealth. Those who had access to food sources were deemed the wealthiest because they didn't have to struggle or fight for survival. That's just how big of an impact food has on our comfort levels. So we have this underlying component that associates food with our well-being. There's an entire universe of sensorial experiences that are triggered by food. One could literally explore every culture around the world through food if they chose to. Now if you look to the layer on top of this, you'll find shelter. Comfort through shelter. Shelter is the combined outcome of freedom and security. It's your own corner of the universe that you've designed to fit who you are to the best of your ability. You're the king in this little empire that you've made up. Your home, because shelter is what your ancestors used to call it, is where you'll spend the average two-thirds of your entire life, one-third of which you'll be in bed sleeping. The purpose of wealth is to facilitate you as much comfort throughout your life as possible, and in nowhere is there more of a clear application than in your own home. For one to be happy, one requires space, clean air, and water. The right medium can radically improve creativity, relieve stress, and induce happiness. Today, the average person cannot afford true comfort. As a society, we've chosen to prioritize economic development over the quality of life. People are now living in suboptimal conditions in what is closer to self-picked cages than anything else. How can one be happy when you're living here? Growing up in a former communist country, we know damn well what that's like. And please note that these people are fortunate to have a home. They're actually the global middle class. But a good portion of the population lives in what are actual slums. This is why you work hard. This is why you build wealth so that nobody you care about will ever go back to these kinds of living conditions. Which takes us to the third and what is probably the most important type of comfort. Child development in a comfortable environment. The good thing about growing up poor as a kid is you don't know you're poor. But inevitably, you'll figure it out, and by that point, it's usually too late. The scars of growing up in poverty have already altered who you are as an individual, and these events now serve as your core decision-making factors. In a very small portion of these, a fire starts burning up inside of them that allows them to escape poverty. Even for them, the hunger never stops, while for the rest, they just settle for what's, ironically, comfortable for them. 
mediocrity. Mediocrity means putting up with shit you wouldn't have to just because of how things are. Discomfort, abuse, and discrimination are just a few pieces of what this lifestyle endures. Through wealth, one can shield the next generation of these scars. We all want our children to grow up healthy, to thrive, be strong and valuable members of our society. With wealth, one has the power to change the landscape, to give those who have the potential a fighting chance to follow what they truly feel like, not what they must in hopes of survival. There are many types of comfort out there, but few seem more valuable than knowing your child is safe, which takes us to the next type of comfort. Comfort through privacy. We touched a little bit on privacy when talking about freedom, but there's more to it in terms of the comfort privacy provides. Privacy means the world is leaving you alone to be yourself, to be peaceful and comfortably away from other societal problems. The more the world evolves, the more we begin to see privacy as one of the most essential elements of a comfortable and free life, especially with the way technology is evolving. In our opinion, privacy is a fundamental right of every individual and it's not just us. They figured this one out in 1948 under the Universal Declaration of Human Rights Article 12, which states, No one shall be subjected to arbitrary interference with his privacy, family, home or correspondence, nor to attacks upon his honor and reputation. Everyone has the right to protection of the law against such interference or attacks. 150 countries agreed to abide by this. So what about social media actively using your data to make money? What about facial recognition software installed on CCTV cameras across the world? This is where things get tricky because the argument always boils down to we need to protect people from terror, which is valid. But if it comes through the infringement of our human rights to privacy, are we actually making any progress as a society? Nobody can live a truly comfortable life knowing that everything they do is being monitored and used against them because that's not what freedom is fundamentally. Everything you do online is monitored. You watching this video or listening to the podcast version is being tracked. Every search you make, every click you do, every website, your name, your face, your age, your location, your love interests, your marital status, they even measure the time you spend looking at someone's photo in order to draw some data from it. This is why we personally no longer connect to the internet without a VPN. It's a simple to use software that hides all of this information from prying eyes with just one click. We reached out to the VPN company we use, NordVPN, and they're offering an exclusive deal to our community. Go to alux.com slash VPN right now and get yours. Not only will you get the best possible price, but it's the first step for you to take control of your privacy. That's alux.com slash VPN. You never realize just how much different elements can affect your comfort, which takes us to the last one in our life fun as emotional comfort. What's life without a bit of fun? The purpose of wealth is to facilitate your well-being in all shapes and forms. Fun is an integral part of feeling alive. We all have a variety of desires and a good portion of those can be easily fulfilled with capital. So why not use your wealth for fun? Almost every type of fun can be acquired through money, from adventures to travel to toys. There's a certain feeling you get when that dose of dopamine hits you when you receive a gift, in whichever form it is. We're social creatures and fun is a shareable concept. You can have fun with other people and share that dopamine inducing source with others. What's the point of going through life without having fun? That's where we think most of the people on Wall Street get the building wealth aspect wrong. Money and wealth are supposed to be facilitators of living, not the other way around. Some people live to work, while others work so they can live. As long as you're living, never forget this. Make your money, hit your goals, but remember to use it so your life isn't just a financial high score. The concept of fun encompasses everything that makes your existence feel like it was worthwhile. Think about it. The most valuable things you have from your past are the fun memories you were able to collect. Nobody remembers their sixth paycheck, but we all remember hanging out late at night with our friends. Fun is emotional comfort. 
While for some people, fun comes from material toys, others find fun connecting to the universe in an emotional sense. When you look at wealth as a source of comfort, you realize the holistic approach one must follow. From feeding your body, protecting your body, protecting your mind, looking out for the future in the context of taking care of your soul. Wealth can do all of this for you if you know how to use it. Comfort in a predictable future leads to happiness. We feel stress because we're struggling to choose between what we want to do and what we have to do. If you take an iron bar and use force in two different points, it creates tension between them. That's why we're feeling stressed. We're unsure about the future. We're unsure. Everything is going to be fine because today is fine, yesterday was fine, and so was the day before. There's tremendous value in having a predictable future that's aligned with our expectations. On a deep level, happiness is the highest form of comfort. Think about it. We're happy when our reality is the same with what our expectations of what reality should be. If you think you have comfort but are not happy, did you really achieve true comfort? This is the type of question one should ask themselves in order to figure out where to focus their efforts. And by being here and consuming this type of content, you're pushing yourself toward personal progress. And that's exactly what we'll discuss in part four of this series, progress in all its wonderful forms. Purpose of wealth for progress. What is progress if not the optimization of life? the constant improvement or replacement of that which underperforms. Progress has been embedded into our DNA since our inception. Those who are able to adapt, evolve, make progress in any form, eventually survive to write the future. This desire to make life better, easier, and live more fulfilled and happy lives has been at the core of who we are as a society. The true purpose of wealth is to do just that, as money and wealth are the latest iteration in the game of progress. Here's the catch, though. It all starts with you. Personal progress. A person's second life begins after they realize that what's ahead of them is under their control. Unlike the past, the future is yours to create it. Your life will change once you realize that as individuals, we all have the power to decide who we want to be and what we want to do. The foundation of this idea is the concept of self-improvement. Do anything for long enough and you become good at it. Study how the best do it for long enough and by emulating them, we can get good at it. One can alter their future by changing their present. The purpose of wealth is to provide you with the tools you need to alter this future to the best of your desire. It's you, it's always you that has to choose, for you are living for yourself and you are your greatest resource. That's why they always say investing in yourself pays the best dividends. Personal progress means spending time, effort, and money, so your ability to navigate the world improves, and by extension, your reality follows suit. One can't fix the world before they fix themselves. So fix yourself, fix everything about you, fix your health, fix your relationships, fix the money, and then use all of that to change your life. The most valuable secret one should know is to seek progress, not perfection. As long as today you're better off than you were yesterday, you're doing all right in life. As long as you're living, please remember this. Once you get yourself to a point where you're comfortable in your life, then you can use the wealth you have at your disposal. And we're talking financial wealth and wealth in terms of knowledge to improve not only your own reality, but the reality of those around you. Inner Circle Progress the last thing you want in life is to reach the other side of the river and know that everyone you care about is still stuck back over there. Over time, we've learned to measure wealth and success differently than just through money. Measure wealth not by how much of it you possess, but by the abundance of wealth around you. What's the point of having the blessings of the world if you can't share them with anyone? 
it's your duty and your responsibility to use your wealth to improve the lives of those you care about in the same way you wish someone did for you when you were starting out. You can be the tide that raises all boats up. In your growth journey, at some point, you'll hit a crossroads. One option is to keep going ahead the same way you used to and get the same type of rewards you deserve, making the same kind of impact, and who knows, maybe you'll slowly, gradually improve. The other comes with an interesting position, to go bigger, to go after goals you can go after on your own. These are larger impact goals. They require more moving pieces than you can manage. Making $100 million will require a different kind of approach than the one that got you $1 million. It's the same with happiness and even health. If you got yours, we feel it's time to mobilize the troops and see what can be done for the well-being of the inner circle. If it's not money, it's your knowledge and insight that will provide value for these people. Use it to improve your inner circle's ability to navigate the world. What better way to use your wealth than this? You start with yourself, move on to your inner circle, and only then you can expand to your local community. Community progress. This is where you become an actual force. The purpose of wealth is to allow you to facilitate real change in your community. What is holding back people just like you? What tools would have served you well growing up? What steep hill were you forced to climb that you didn't have to? There's an old saying that goes like this, it takes a village to raise a child, but who's taking care of the village? If each of its members takes from the village enough for themselves to get away from it, what happens to the village in the long term? We're all brought up by communities, and it's our duty to aid in the process of development of these communities so that they can keep doing what they're doing. What communities need above everything else isn't money, although money does help. It's actually tools and instructions on how to use the tools. Don't give them fish. Teach them how to make their own fishing rods, how to catch the fish, how to make sure they fish in a sustainable way, and then check up on their progress. It's up to you to change the game. You didn't like what school taught you? Help them teach better. Your community didn't support you? Don't go on to perpetuate that practice. Be what the community should have been for you when you were starting out. The community only changes if those who changed already stay and help the community to do the same. If you're able to help your community thrive, guess what? Your solution works with other communities too. Progress through distribution. Progress is the result of multiple iterations of new and improved tools and insights. If you were able to fix yourself, your inner circle, and above everything else, your community, then it's super likely your solution can be deployed en masse to alleviate the pain of others. That's effectively how and why the world keeps getting better and better every year. There are people out there who figure out smart solutions and then distribute them globally. And because of everyone's small contribution, the world is less shittier than it used to be. Everything around you is the solution somebody found to a problem that was so good it was mass distributed. We live in the age of comfort, that of connectivity and information abundance. It's never been cheaper to produce anything than it is today and at the scale we can do it now. Use the leverage of scale to help those you can help. You're under no obligation to do so, but after you solve wealth, you'll begin to realize that what you're actually craving is impact through utility. We all die eventually and want something to live beyond us, which takes us to the last type of progress, future progress. This is progress through innovation. You are effectively financing the future. How amazing is it that you could have this kind of impact, that your ideas matched with your wealth and other people's efforts could actually create a new future for everyone? People think the world will get better on its own, but that's not the truth. Things get better when time, effort, creativity, and money come together to make it better. They say the only way to predict the future is to create it. And time and time again, we've seen people do just that. That's why the world is looking at Elon Musk the way it does. 
People want progress, and society is ready to back, support, and help in any way they can those who bring us progress. Without these kinds of individuals willing to tackle the future and bend it to their will, we would all be stuck in a slowly improving present. As long as you live, remember that the light bulb didn't come from the continuous iteration of the candle. If one finds themselves in the fortunate position to have amassed wealth, what higher purpose could that wealth serve than pushing humanity as we know it forward? We've yet to explore the universe. We have yet to understand ourselves. And as Frieza put it, this isn't even our final form. It all starts with you, the individual, and slowly expanding outwards in terms of impact. Look at wealth as fuel for progress and deploy yours toward whichever progress phase you find yourself in. Beyond progress is truth. We're hungry for truth. We always have been. All the progress we do in all its shapes and forms is to get us closer to the truth. What truth that is, nobody knows. But as time progresses, so does our understanding. We don't like illnesses, so we want to cure them. We don't like when others treat us poorly, so we try to cure our social issues. All this progress is so we can afford to shine a bigger light so that more of the truth is revealed to all of us. We are tiny beings stuck on this floating rock that's been revolving around a giant flaming ball of gas for four and a half billion years, or at least that's the best estimate of the truth. The more you think about it, this race for wealth, for resources, it all pales away when you zoom out on the picture and realize all the progress humanity has done up until this point is so it allows us to find more of the truth and through it, progress even more. But before we conquer the unknowns of the universe, we need to find the truth within us and expand from there. The more we do, the more society rewards us because of it. The Purpose of Wealth 5. Legacy We all want our lives to have meaning, to leave behind more than we took and know that because of us, even in the slightest, the world is better than when we found it. The final purpose of wealth is to facilitate your legacy. So what is legacy if not eternal impact? Legacy is when you're silent, but your presence is felt. It comes from the highest form of impact one can have. The thing is, you don't set out to build a legacy. It happens as a result of your pursuit of adding value. The more you think about it, the more you realize it's the same with success and even money. All of them come after you do good work. People take notice, and this is the first type of legacy. Legacy through example. You're writing your legacy every single day. Be aware of what you're writing. How can an individual be themselves if all they do is be like everyone else? You see, there are two ways to go through life. One, by getting on the train of life and riding it in your cabin until the day you die. And two, by walking, swimming, and riding your way to the final destination we call death. We all get to the same destination, but the value lies in the journey. The second option is always more interesting than living your life on autopilot. That's how new roads come to be. Someone like you decides to create a new path for themselves, and the world is paying attention. If you do it successfully, soon others will decide to walk the same path, but there needs to be a trailblazer, a risk taker, the one who enters the tall grass without knowing what awaits. You can't build legacies by being like everyone else or doing what everyone else is doing. As the people early in the comments know, there's only one reward for being first. Everyone else is a follower. The world remembers those who are first, those who are first to do it right, those who are first to take everyone else somewhere they've never been. The purpose of wealth is to make sure the legacy you're writing is worth reading. And by doing this, your story is worth saving, for the next type of legacy has to do with saving everything of value. Legacy through preservation. What is the purpose of life if not spending it on that which will outlast you? 
The more you look back, the more you realize the only things we are seeing is what others have left for us that were able to withstand the test of time. Preservation of value is key. There is a value in knowledge preserved in books. There is a value in art and the way it makes us feel. There is a value in architecture and the way we build the future based on it. There is a value in diversity of humans, of animals, of species. Save it all before we're unable to save anything. The purpose of wealth is to give us all a fighting chance to save everything, including ourselves. Allow all of it to thrive and we will thrive because of it. We draw value from it all and if one is paying attention, in the last century we've been sacrificing the long game for short-term rewards. If you want to build a legacy, keep in mind to save what needs saving and rid ourselves of that which doesn't serve society. Which takes us to the third form of legacy. Social legacy. Legacy is not what you're doing for yourself, but for everyone coming up next. The world rewards those brave enough to correct it. In a world augmented by creative ideas, there's no need for hierarchies. We don't need a caste system. We don't need race, sex, religion, height, eye color, or political affiliation to stop us from progress. It doesn't matter if we are or not created equal for what the world needs is equality of opportunity. Anyone from anywhere in the world could build their future through the value of their ideas. There's a big difference between equality of outcome and equality of opportunities. One leads to society collapsing and the other one to society thriving. It's those who are fighting for the latter who are building a social legacy for themselves. It's those of you who do not let abuse go by without addressing it. It's not what you leave behind for other people, it's what you leave in people. Social legacy comes from the sacrifice of the self for the benefit of everyone else, and that's exactly what we see in the people who've managed to garner social legacy. The purpose of wealth is not to turn you into a freedom fighter, but to give aid to those whose mission is the minimization of suffering in all its forms. Unfortunately, one cannot choose to retreat and stand by, for sometimes not doing the right thing is what allows the bad thing to thrive. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. The world is changing fast, so you're either going to ride the wave of change, or you might drown in it. And the best way to secure your legacy is through being the one who brings on the new wave. Legacy through innovation. We referenced Gandhi earlier and there's a quote of his that drives this point perfectly. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. They did the same to Elon and the world will probably do the same to you. Every innovator is in one of those four brackets. Are they fighting you, laughing at you, are they ignoring you, or did you win? If not yet, keep playing the game until you do. Legacy is when you need no introduction. People know you because you've touched their life in a positive way and because of it, your reputation precedes you. The world remembers the innovators. You want to be wealthy and leave behind a legacy? Be contrarian and be right. Who cares what they think if you can prove it? So prove it. Prove them wrong. If it doesn't exist yet, then build it. Put your mind where your mouth is and the world will thank you and tip its hat toward you. Use your wealth to innovate and your legacy will be long lived. A society grows when great old men plant trees in whose shade they know they shall never sit. Your innovations might be the stepping stone for future generations. We need innovators. We need game changers. We need people to throw out the status quo and bring us into the future. Which brings us to the last one on our list. Legacy by Domino. If innovation relies on figuring out a new solution to an old problem, this cannot happen without discovery. Discovery is the first domino piece in a chain that takes us to places we didn't know we wanted to go. The personal computer was an incredible innovation, but it was only after we connected it to the internet that we realized just how big of an impact it could have. But without the computer, we wouldn't have been able to build the internet. 
Without the internet, we wouldn't have been able to build blockchain. Legacy comes from this layer or domino style of thinking. Everyone who gets rich and makes a fortune relies on one of these layers to begin their legacy. IBM with the computer, Bill Gates with software, Steve Jobs with the iPhone, Sergey with Google, Vitalik with Ethereum, and now people are building on top of that. That's where the saying, we're standing on the shoulders of giants comes from, and we've got plenty of giants doing the heavy lifting for us. If you don't have wealth, use the most recent layer to build your fortune, and then use said wealth to open up the future for what's coming next. We might end up living in virtual worlds, exploring space and bending time. We might live happily ever after once we transcend to gods and live eternally as code. And today is part of that journey. And you are part of that journey. So ask yourself, what is your legacy? What will the world remember you by? How can you help to build a better tomorrow? Hopefully this video has served its purpose as a domino piece in your journey. We can't wait to hear where it takes you. Everything is a choice. For as long as you live, remember that everything we do is a choice. Everything we own will be a result of a choice we make toward having it. We become what we choose to become. Every single action we take is a choice. We like to think that we have no choice, but you chose to watch this video. You chose to open up the internet today. You chose to get out of bed in the morning. When thinking about wealth and the purposes of which it serves, freedom, security, comfort, progress, and legacy, most people think of it in terms of a desire, something we wish we could have, instead of thinking of it as a choice. If you want to get really good at playing the guitar, it's a choice that from this day forward you'll practice and study it continuously. In a world where everything is at your disposal, your reality is a choice as well. What we're about to say will sound controversial, but the more deeply you think about it, the more you realize it's the truth. In our world of free information, staying ignorant is a choice. In our world of unlimited teachers, staying unskilled is a choice. In a world of abundance, staying poor is a choice. In a world where there is still suffering, not doing anything about it is also a choice. We want you to take a good look at yourself and make better choices starting today. Practice what you learn. Start small, follow the progress model and see where it takes you. We will always be here for you, the true Aluxers, to guide you along your journey because by doing this, it cements our own legacy. Through some serendipitous turn of events, we found each other, and we couldn't be more proud to share this leg of the journey with you. No matter how little or how far you've come, the rest of your journey starts now.